Hello Neighbor released on December 8th, 2017 to uh, unfavorable reviews. Many disliked the game with review scores falling well into undesired territory. But what went wrong with Hello Neighbor and is it really that bad? Is it possible that Hello Neighbor is better than many initially thought? Well, yes. It, it, no? Maybe so. To fully answer this question, we will have to go back to the beginning, back to the golden age of mascot horror, back to the days of Hello Neighbor's birth, all the way to its final release. The first time Hello Neighbor was publicly available in play was in its free pre-alpha demo, which was released in 2016. And this was a wonderful first impression to the series, immediately getting praise from the community and quickly getting popularity online, eventually being played by, well, literally every YouTuber in existence due to the publisher TinyBuild giving free copies of the game to whatever YouTuber was willing to play it. Despite the pre-alpha understandably being short, it was one hell of a time as the gameplay it provided was extremely fun and intense. This pre-alpha sets up the gameplay loop from here all the way to its final release. The gameplay consists of you sneaking into your neighbor's house and solving puzzles to ultimately get into his basement and see what he is hiding, all while trying not to get caught. It's simple. It's a bit scary and tense. It's fun. Puzzles were not too hard to solve, but were just right in their difficulty and the neighbor would set up traps in the place where you would go to the most in hopes to catch you. This was one of the main draws of the game that the AI was going to learn from your actions as you played. Do you keep entering from a certain door? Well, after one or two attempts at breaking into his house through that door, he will block that door with a trap. Do you keep hiding in a certain closet? Well, now he will check that every so often in his daily routine. Now, if you've already played Hell and Ever, you probably know everything about what I just said, and it may seem that I am simply gushing over the pre-alpha, but this is only because of how strongly it proved that Hello Neighbor could work. But of course, the pre-alpha was not without its issues. It had many bugs, with the neighbor often glitching out or with puzzles breaking and items missing. It also didn't have a beginning or end. You would open the basement door and it would just be empty. Which is fine, because yet again, this was only a proof of concept. It's still a pre-alpha. And a lot of this was fixed with the eventual Alpha 1, which added a few minor things to the pre-alpha and was mainly made to polish things up. But Alpha 1 had an ending, which also teased that more was coming soon. And soon it is. Alpha 2 was released and it changed a lot. The game has a slightly new art style, bringing in some cartoony elements, and the gameplay was slightly changed for both good and bad. Like how you can now vault through windows, but you have to hold the E button to pick up items, which makes it hard to pick things up on the run when compared to the pre-alpha in Alpha 1, which was just tap F to pick it up. The neighbor also felt like a bigger threat due to the new smaller house. It also feels like the neighbor places more traps, but that might just be my experience. You could finish this alpha in up to 5 minutes, which by the way is a perfect amount of time and some people may even say it's too long, you know? You, you know? Even though you can beat this in five minutes, it further proved that Hello Neighbor was a fun concept, a fantastic concept, that was only getting better and better, until it wasn't. Out comes Alpha 3, with it being a large step backwards for the game. The atmosphere was really good, with it only taking place at night, but the new house was a bit too big for the game like this. But many, myself included, were dismissive of this fact as it was an Alpha. They were just messing around and testing to see what worked and what didn't. Also, there weren't that many light sources, making the whole Alpha pitch black unless if you had a flashlight. It gets even worse as the bugs are atrocious in this alpha, with the neighbor often getting stuck, items disappearing, which happened to me twice, and what I came across as my character becoming tiny and too fat to enter doors. I don't know how this happened, but it's funny, so I let it slide. The rest of this house was pretty broken and things just didn't make sense, and this was basically the start of the trend with things not making sense, and along with the trend of Hello Neighbor's downfall. But yet again, let me reiterate, this is just an alpha. Things can be changed. So Tiny Build and Dynamic Pixels took player feedback when making their final alpha, Alpha 4, and they made the house even bigger. Despite all the negativity around Alpha 3, they decided to lean into what was unanimously decided by the community to be what was breaking and ruining the game. Now, Alpha 4 did fix some glitches and added a day and night cycle, added abilities, and fine tuned a ton of puzzles and made the game just a bit better. But everything else was worse. The house was massive, now containing more rooms that the neighbor rarely goes into. He's a ground floor enemy, he can't even go to the second floor. This made the game super easy. You just get to the second floor and you'd be safe, and you can do the rest of the house without having to worry about him. Alpha 3 and 4 made the neighbor a joke of a mechanic that might as well have not been even in the game. The neighbor is also extremely campy. He's almost always sitting in front of the door that lets you into his house. It's like a kid playing Modern Warfare 2. Yet again, players said the same thing, that this is the wrong direction to take the game. But Tiny Build and Dynamic Pixels did not care, and went with it anyway by leaning into it even further in their betas. In total, there are three betas that were released, along with a Bendy and the Ink Machine collab, 
collab that was pretty cool and not gonna lie, a really fun time. Beta 1 was basically a small jump from Alpha 4 featuring the same house but with more improvements, more floors, more rooms, more puzzles, just more. That also includes more bugs, to the point where I couldn't even play it. During the intro there is a moment where you have to pick up a chair that's blocking the basement and then enter the door to the basement, but the door kept glitching out to the point where it somehow blocked my ability to open the door or pick up the chair, and to fix this, I relaunched the game five times. And it still didn't work. So beta 1 was completely broken and luckily beta 2 was playable. Sort of. I was actually able to play beta 2 back in the day because it was mainly bug fixes for the first beta. This time the beta's big issue though is it's not a soft lug glitch, it's the fact that it is literally lost to time. I couldn't find it anywhere. Not on Steam, not online, and not even through Humble Bundle which is where I initially ordered it. It's just gone. But beta 3 is where things started to get more finalized and polished as this was only a few months away from the game's full release. Beta 3 decided to not just make the house bigger, again, but actually redesigned many parts of the house to make it easier to understand and navigate through. So despite it being a much bigger house, it didn't feel as much of a chore to go through, which was one of the biggest issues in Alpha 4, Beta 1, and Beta 2. This was a big change from the game going from a dumpster fire to just trash, albeit with some unfavorable qualities. Beta 3 was convoluted. Puzzles simply made zero sense. This has been a recurring thing starting from Alpha 3, but Beta 3 is nearing the final build of the game and puzzles still don't make sense, but this lack of direction for the player in Hello Neighbor was sadly never going to be fixed and was included in the final release shipped to the public on December 8th of 2017. Hey 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 but before we get into that we have one last thing to check out which is awesome. I did mention that there was a Bendy and the Ink Machine collab for Hello Neighbor's beta. The content is the exact same as Hello Neighbor beta 3 which we already covered which was mediocre but now it has a fresh cone of paint to make the game look well bendified. The neighbor is wearing a Bendy mask along with his chase music being changed to a Bendy song. Objects within the world have also been changed to have Bendy on it. This all being released on Halloween of 2017 was a fun little thing at the time, especially since it was during the height of mascot horror, with two popular mascots coming together for one game. But sadly this is only in the beta and was for a limited time, as it was not a fun mode present in the full release. And here we are, at the full release. And what happened was exactly what everyone thought was going to happen after the decline that was seen in the later alphas and throughout the betas. But this, this was somehow worse than that. But we will get into that later, as we should start at the beginning of the full game. Hello Neighbor released three acts, each one containing a different house to play in. Act 1 is pretty much a copy of Alpha 2 with the smaller, less complex house, but this time you play as a child. After doing a little parkour and avoiding the neighbor in his house, you get a key to the basement and once you enter, you have to explore the basement, which that part's really, really boring. It's not even a puzzle, just walking in a straight line, opening doors, and then turning the power off. But all in all, this is great and is a good start to Hell and Neighbor because it is actually an enjoyable time. You can beat this act in 15 minutes due to its small size, but those 15 minutes are going to be some of the best 15 15 minutes you will get out of this game, as Act 2 will immediately see a drop in quality. Act 2 starts after the neighbor catches you and is about to open his secret door in the basement, with you now being held captive. Your job is to escape the house, which is surrounded by a giant fence. When looking at the house, you can tell it's much bigger now, as it's basically Act 1, but upgraded to have more rooms and more floors. Now this act in particular isn't all too bad in my opinion, albeit it has some very questionable parkour sections that really should not be anywhere near this game. The reason that this act is actually an issue is because of its enclosed state. Now, you are starting within the house and its fence with no way to leave. This means that if you are seen by the neighbor, then you are basically screwed. Another thing is that the neighbor is pretty aggressive with his trap and camera placement. With only one door to let you into each floor, that means that the neighbor just camps each door with a ton of cameras and will basically know your every move without giving you the chance to make any progress. But it seems that the developers also felt this way and created Act 3 as a way to go from the super small house to the super big house. Act 3 starts with you as an adult moving into your old home across from the neighbor's home, which is now destroyed. You then go through a nightmare, which is the rest of the game. Yep, 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 this game pulls it all a dream on you. This house is pretty much the exact same as seen in Beta 3, with just a few changes here and there. The main issue was that this house was even bigger than the Beta 3 house, containing a few more rooms, but with the neighbor now being able to go to other floors, but he never does this unless he's already chasing you. Yet again, they did exactly what fans did not want them to do, and these extra rooms helped to make Act 3 now feel like a chore when it didn't so much in beta 3. 
And so you go through the rest of this house, solving a bunch of really bad puzzles. Like I mentioned earlier, Beta 3 of Hello Neighbor was confusing, not giving players any direction. This not being fixed resulted in the final lease being very bad for what is a finished game. After you finish the house, you end up going through the same basement as you did in Act 1, but now get to see his secret. But surprise, Hello Neighbor now has a final boss for some reason with a final act, which is extremely boring, tedious, and is just a massive chore to get through with it all being being parkour. So this game falls off hard. The second I entered Act 3, I wanted to uninstall this game. Act 2 was the last part of this game where I could say the game had its moments of fun, but after Act 2 with Act 3 and the final boss, the whole game was terrible. It was literally abysmal. But what went wrong? What could possibly have happened to allow this game to go from extremely promising to straight up bad? Well, it is a multitude of things. To start off, the devs found their core audience children. Children were for some reason flocking to see this game be played by their favorite YouTubers like FGTV and DanTDM and so on. So naturally, you want to profit on that attention from children, but by deciding to cater the game towards children, Dynamic Pixels and Tiny Builds single-handedly destroyed the fundamentals of Hello Neighbor. It had elaborate puzzles, a realistic yet cartoony art style that looks really good in Alpha 2, and it had a horror element to put you on the edge of your seat. A lot of these were removed so that kids could get in on this game. Now it's visually appealing to children with a purely cartoon style, but it's dumbed down. It looks bland, it looks boring. They already had a good style, but changed it and made it worse. The same can be said about its puzzles, which were initially elaborative, but now are convoluted and confusing, just so they can pad out the game time. You can easily beat this game in an hour and a half, if you know what you're doing. For most of us, it'll take maybe five to six hours, just because the puzzles make no sense, which means that we are past that two hour window to return the game. Without the horror, this game became a really bad puzzle game. The scare of suddenly hearing the blaring music of simulated screams in Alpha 1 while the neighbor chases you throughout his house was what made this game so promising. Yet it delivered on none of it because of changing their target audience. And I don't blame them for shifting their audience toward children. I mean, have you seen how profitable YouTube kids videos are? I mean, god damn! But children were not the only problem, despite them normally being the devils they are. Act 1 stuck to the game's roots, taking place in a small house, almost the exact same as Alpha 2 where their neighbor thrives, all while giving you multiple ways to achieve your goal of getting into the basement. This was the point of Hello Neighbor, a point that was eventually lost in the making of Act 2, 3, and 4 of the final game, along with its alphas and betas slowly losing what made Hello Neighbor, Hello Neighbor. It feels like Hello Neighbor is only designed for this one small house, which is basically a small intro to the game. All throughout development, the house has just got bigger and bigger with the mindset that bigger is better, when in reality, that's not true, with it actually being small is better. And believe me guys, that's what my girlfriend says. The early alphas in Act 1 understand that, while Act 2 takes that idea a bit too far, hurting the act of making the house too small with too little choices to make with no spaces to hide, taking out some of that fun factor. Act 3 takes a dump in your morning coffee and forces you to drink it. The game took that turn from its early alphas to now being loaded with parkour that just doesn't work correctly and really ruins the game. And of course, along with a badly made game, you get the bugs, and there are a lot of them. Throughout this video, I have only mentioned some of the bugs in this game, and sadly nothing has been fixed since launch day, leaving the game as a buggy mess that barely functions. During my playthrough of this game, I did not go 5 minutes without encountering another bug, whether that be disappearing items, enable glitching out, items falling through the floors, me falling through the floors, and overall just a terrible experience. Oh, and don't let me forget about how TinyBuild's Twitter account harassed MatPat to try and get him to make a theory about this game, and its lackluster story with it all being, in the end, a dream. It's like they put all the effort in making a crappy story and then forgot to make a game so they had to rely on YouTubers to make theories and make the game interesting for viewers. Overall, the letdown of Hello Neighbor was a slow one, releasing each build of the game as it got worse and worse, and inevitably, the game reached its status of being an example of a game doing everything wrong. But is it really as bad as many say? And to answer that, no. <laughs> Sort of. I did enjoy parts of this game, and despite the fact that the majority of people will be needing a guide to have an idea of what to do, I think this game is pretty fun all the way until Act 3. Once you reach that point though, just do yourself a favor and uninstall. And to be fair, what went wrong also went right, as in Hello Neighbor's failure gave it the boost in popularity to succeed. Hello Neighbor's release was so big that the franchise was only beginning, with multiple spin-off games releasing, a TV show running as of this video's release, a book series, and a sequel that just came out in November. Hello Neighbor may have ended 
ended up a colossal failure, but its beginnings were and still are fun to go back to, and it has even sparked a new franchise to develop. Do I hope that the future of Hello Neighbor is bright? Yes. But I can't help but say that despite its fantastic beginnings, Hello Neighbor ended up being almost as bad as we remember it to be.